All right, it's time now to take a look at the stories on the front pages of the National Dailies. And to do that with us is a public affairs commentator, Ayodele Adieu, a regular one. Yeah, yeah I, I, I have chosen to add allergy, <laughs> Ayodele Adieu. <laughs> Thank but you for having you. me. Yeah. You're welcome. So let's start with the Daily Trust. Major story here. Uh, Kaduna crisis. Perpetrators won't go scot-free. Buhari, community members to pay for damages. El Rufai, uh, you would say that this, is, this statement is coming at the right time? Well, I mean, I don't know. About the perpetrators, of course. But then when you're going to be imposing fines on the communities, because what you okay. usually have is the case where innocent people and such who are caught in between the crossfire now have to pay for the stupidity of, of other people. And I, I find that um, quite unfair. For me, the, the security people will need to step up their game, be more proactive and ensure um, that, that the public safety is key and number one on their radar. So, you know, innocent people don't have to pay for a damage that they did not cause. Because, I mean, you can go over and over again and you realize that in those situations, it's bandits who come from a different place who do not live directly in those places who perpetrate the most heinous of crimes and mm. you know and for, for somebody to say that um, other people who are living peacefully there who some are actually victims you know of this case is to want to pay for such damages i think um, is going to bridge um, too far but of course the perpetrators have to be punished have to be brought to book and be made an example of so that such incidences will never and be the fact that the president also met with religious leaders and uh, traditional leaders as well because yes. uh, many have said countless times that they are key into you know into making peace reign in any society yeah i mean it, there's now a distance between traditional leaders and the people that they supposedly lead their traditional leaders do not have as much power and influence as you you would think that they used to have and of course when you have millions of course you now have over 10 million people roaming around the streets of northern nigeria mm. um, who have no roof over their heads who have no allegiance to anybody i mean how how much influence does the traditional ruler have on, on those kinds of persons you know so we have to deal with the real issues which is the fact that you have so many kids in, in, in the in North that are excluded from social benefits, from, from welfare programs who are poor, broken, have no future. And those issues need to be dealt with. Those people need to be educated. Otherwise, they become you know, a threat to national security. All right, let's move on. Now go to the top of uh, the paper, now just under the, under the masthead from the left. Minimum wage. Governors offer 22,500 Naira as labor protests. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's becoming an impasse between um, the labor and the federal government. I, I think it was the governors who proposed that they could pay 22,500. Yes, the um, mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, it, I don't like, I, I really don't like to comment on, on the labor issues because on the one hand, you can't argue against the fact that their take home hardly takes them anywhere, mm. you know. And then the other hand also, you, you, you can also argue against the fact that over 60 percent of our revenue is going on servicing debt yes. and uh, uh, overheads and, and what have you so there's, there's very little amount um, that the governments can afford um, to pay extra so but, but it's like you're caught in between a rock and a hard place when you, when you say that to a civil servant <laughs> really it would be quick to tell you that politicians e in office exactly my point you know so, so that's why it, it's really that. hard to comment on on on, on, on these <laughs> issues all right no plan to review fuel price and npc says the president hosts a grieved apc aspirants uh, the president has been making so many efforts to unite aggrieved uh, members of the party you know after the primary elections uh, fallout and all that so that they can go to the 2019 general election as a united force you know usually if you do the right thing there will be no need um, you know to try to assuage people to try to persuade them mm. all all the party needed to do was to conduct a free fair transparent primary election are you saying that the um, you know was obvious to everybody okay. and, and then you had very few issues lingering left right and center all right then just the rest of the stories now uh, let's run through them 400 arrested police vehicle police vehicle burnt as shiites continue protest PSN Confab, FG sets up two committees on drug abuse. So All right, uh, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper. And the Punch, of course, leads with uh, the minimum wage issue. We can only pay 22500 uh, That's uh, the governor's telling the workers now. Now, Abdulaziz Yaridi, uh, chairman of the governor's forum, 
uh, came out to say, look, not that we cannot pay, I mean, not that we do not want to pay, but we are looking at a sustainable strategy, um, you know, to, to um, you know, sustain the payment of, of this. That, that in some way makes some sense, doesn't it? Well, I mean, if you even look at the fact that the 18,000 naira that is being paid now, you have states that are owing several months, mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine, ten months. Um, some states have found some ingenious formula of paying salaries where they call modulated salary payments and at what have you. So mm. um, <coughs> the 18,000 seems to be a problem for several states. How much more between 2,500? Mm. So um, I, I can I slightly understand his sentiments, but as long as um, political office holders would hold, would earn you know 10 15 times that of civil servants and never get old um, there's hardly a case you can make against um, the labor union mm. all right uh, federal government beefs, uh, beefs up security around Asarok uh, and others as the Shiite security agents clashes uh, continue well and we also hear that police will charge about 400 members of Shiites uh, with terrorism <laughs> <laughs> let, let, listen, let's, let's get serious in this country and let's call a spade what it is. It, it's just been 10 years, 10 years since 2008, mm. um, you know, when the security agencies and the government made you know, a very silly mistake um, to kill Muhammad Yusuf yes. um, in an unpleasant manner Leader and plunged mm. the entire northeastern Nigeria into a crisis that we have not recovered from mm. where close to <laughs> 2 million people are internally displaced, where thousands have been killed, houses burned, businesses destroyed. <coughs> um, we seem not to want to learn from our lessons, and we're going that same route Path again. again. Yeah. But in this case, you're dealing with um, a sect, a uh, religious sect, that are over 9 million in northern Nigeria. Nigeria. How are you going to deal with those people if they become radicalized? Mm. <laughs> and I tell you with all sincerity, we must, in the media and in the civil society, pressure the government to do the right thing because what usually will happen mm. is after four years, at most eight years, they will be out of office. Mm. And the average Nigerian will have to deal with the consequences of the decisions of the or the indecisions of political office holders. Mm. Because you cannot continue, you, you can't, con in UN International, um, uh, you can't shoot people at the back. And, and mm. their, demand is quite, their demand is quite simple. Yes, release release well. our lead. It's, 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 it's simple. I mean, and the I, courts, I hear, the courts I, have also. I, mean, I hear arguments that they threw stones. Don't get me wrong, it's extremely stupid to throw stones at soldiers moving the cup. Extremely stupid. Mm. But the price of stupidity cannot be death, for goodness sake. Mm. There are better ways to deal with, with protests. You, you could have non lethal bullets, you know, that just neutralizes them for, for a few minutes, and you could disperse people. You, they disperse close to 500,000 crowds in Rio before the World Cups mm. without killing a single person. You can achieve all of these things without alienating yep. a group of people. What's bit uh, many is that uh, it happened on Saturday, and just about three days after, after using live ammunition on um, people, yes. you know, that were throwing stones, yes. it happened again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, days apart. so let's go to let's the let's look at the daily now. sun news. Okay, we'll go to I the daily point, sun yeah. now. Yeah. All right, uh, major stories uh, still about uh, the minimum wage jumpers, wage showdown likely as governors offer 22,500 naira. Workers threaten to go on strike from <clears throat> excuse me from November 6. We already talked about that extensively, so we'll leave it. We'll go to other stories from the top left. Buhari to deal with killers, 75 dead in Kaduna. We talked about that as well. Police arrest 400 Shiite protesters in Abuja. We already uh, discussed it. So here, probe revealed troops not suffering, says minister. The minister of information say, uh, said that uh, after the probe into the allegation of uh, ill treatment meted out on soldiers at the theater of war in the northeastern part of Nigeria, they've come to discover that there is no such thing. They are well taken care of. Everything about them, the welfare is top-notch. I believe it. <laughs> okay, so we'll leave that. I will come down here. Edo to give Anini state burial. Well deserved for yeah, yeah, Mr. Fix-It. Uh, veteran politician, Mr. Fix-It. Um, well, he's, 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 lead a, he's lived a good life. Um, he's led um, the SDP to victory where you know, 19, the famous 94 elections, mm. uh, 93 elections. 93. Um, and of course, he's done it again for the. P he did it again for the PDP. 
well-respected man in Edo State, and I, I think he will be missed um, in the political circle, and, and you know, by the PDP, who he helped over several years, and of course, the people of um, Edo will miss an elder statesman. Absolutely. So that's about it. All right. So let, let's take a look at the Daily Sun newspaper, and the Daily Sun leads off with the uh, minimum wage now. Of course, on the other side now, we looked at uh, the gov government side, but now on Labour side, Labour is saying, look, on thirty thousand, we stand. So. Uh, there is a sense in which um, the the um, the stage for for battle is uh, <laughs> been set at the moment. I'm I'm glad I'm I'm not on the negotiation table and um, <laughs> you know <laughs> so like I say I, I just like you know, to tact tactfully mm. uh, you know slide away from from, from the labor issue because it's, right. it's, it's, it's a topsy turvy <laughs> situation. Yeah, yeah. Places you the, between the rock and a hard place mm. where you know that they deserve more than the, the 30,000 area that they even requesting for. Yeah. But, but the other side, you also know that the government is not, um, you know, solvent enough. To well, be we'll, able still, to we'll still discuss it anyway mm. later on in the show. So All right. Don't, don't turn Igbo land to war zone. Ohanese warns youths ahead of Operation Python Dance the Third. Mm. Mm. <laughs> 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 no comment. <You're> speechless. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's let leave it at that. Uh, <coughs> President, for PDP South, <coughs> South governors meet in Asorok and uh, Dixon, of course, you remember that was yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and yeah. Uh, by our state governor said, look, we won't disclose the details yeah, I mean. of our meeting. So we we'll leave it at um, as it is that way. Um, well, killings not solution to poverty. That's coming from the president. Muhammad Buhari says federal government will prosecute perpetrators of Kaduna crisis. Well, how many times have we heard that line? Yeah, I mean, we, we've, 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 we've heard it. Um, it's become a dime a dozen, and, and it's becoming, the talk is becoming um, uh, too cheap. Unfortunately, one of the things that I've noticed is that we're always trying to deal um, with an age-long crisis, the mm -hmm. same manner in which we've dealt with it over the years. So that's why we've not been able to totally lay them to rest. The Kaduna issue did not start yesterday. It's, mm. it's been going <coughs> on, uh, you know, for, 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 for a couple of years now, you know. Same as, as the crisis, you know, I in northern Nigeria. They followed a predictable pattern over the years. Unfortunately, we have not responded differently mm. to the way you know this pattern has has been, and it's quite predictable. And then you have we have we've been reactive over and over again, and have not been able um, to nip this crisis in the bud. So they're doing, doing the same thing, and still expecting the same result. Yeah, so there's a crisis. Result. You proclaim a curfew. People are in their houses. Mm. Three days later, it looks like everything is settled, and then you have a reoccurrence. You know, a month or two later, because we're, we're really not. Um, reached the root cause of these issues and have actually not put together a cohesive plan um, to deal with such security challenges. And, and it's been happening since the Medina crisis in, in mm, the 1980s. Indeed. They followed a predictable pattern. pattern. Mm. And, and, and it's sad that we always have to lose lives over and over again with people talking tough and no actions to match the words that they make. And, and uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's human life. 75 indeed. will plunge uh, uh, serious in, countries uh, into indeed. a serious uh, mourning. Indeed. And, and the president, sorry, the president made reference to Jamal Khashoggi's death <coughs> that, uh, you know, <coughs> has engulfed the entire world and made reference also to about 75 or more people that lost their lives in the Kaduna, and nobody talked about it. I it mean, means that we are yeah. gradually going into irrelevance. Exactly, mm -hmm. That's because the world doesn't take you seriously any longer. Like I just said, 75 people will plunge countries into deep, <laughs> into deep introspection, mm. deep mourning that 75 of their citizens have lost their lives. And, and here we are, where it's normal, it's like nothing, nothing has happened. You don't see it, it, an imagined, people are, there's no sense of urgency to the deal with the crisis. And there's a complacency. And, 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 and we're talking about human beings. We don't even have the courtesy of putting their names to, to, to the dead bodies. It's just the statistics. Mm. Any, anybody can just die and you're not remember. It just seems like they're a group of Nigerians that have become the expendables. And, 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 it seems to, and that seems to be why it's, uh, it's somehow uh, making it easy for people not to have empathy anymore. When exactly. They real exactly. figures of yeah, the I number mean, of people killed 20 people died, please. Time. What are we having for breakfast? Mm. It, doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't move okay, the country so any longer. Yeah, sad. Let's go to the last but, of course, not the least uh, paper. A police car burnt in Shiite protest for 100 arrested with uh, multiple riders. Why we opened fire on protesters' army. Army killed our members without provocation, Shiites. 
IMN members came into Abuja with petrol bombs. Police, well, it has become a case of he said, she said. Let's just leave that since we talked about it. And of course, you can see the picture of the, the car, the police car that was burned. But look at uh, the need really to talk about respecting public property. And maybe that was why, what prompted the Kaduna State Governor to talk about members of community to rebuild whatever property, public property that were destroyed. Yeah, there's, 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 there's an absolute need to, to, to protect um, public property. I mean, whether it's pipelines, whether it's police vehicles, and it's very important, you know, you know that, that we do that. But again, we, we must, we must, we must warn um, that we must not allow a proxy war in our country. Um, you don't want what is happening in Yemen to happen in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You don't want what is happening in other countries to happen in our country. Okay. We run a secular state, not a Sunni or Shia or a Christian or, or an Ifa country. It's a secular mm -hmm. state where everybody okay. has a right to practice his own religion. And we must not allow a proxy war to happen in our country. Let everybody respect the law and let the law respect the rights of every citizen um, in our country. Well, I've said it better. All right, uh, there's just um, some sort of fact-checking uh, analysis here. Finance experts tackle FG on increase in debt stock. Vice President Oshimba Jirikol said that this administration has borrowed just about $10 billion. Dollars, yeah. Well, a uh, budget is saying it's about $22 billion, actually. <laughs> well, of course, Iran is saying that, well, it's up to $47 billion. Dollars, right. So, <laughs> yeah, well, that aside, Boko Haram, starving troops, story, fake news, Lai Mohammed. Mm. No plan to review fuel price and MPC. Subsidiary <sighs> resumes global shipment of crude oil. Uh, ex lagos speaker Palumi seeks others arraigned over police DSP's murder. Dangote responsible for over 10% of Nigeria's GDP. Wow. Yeah, I mean, One person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of, of course. That, so the problem is you, you've had a, a country that has made several billionaires that has really not translated to employment opportunities for people mm -hmm. uh, because most of your billionaires uh, are in the oil sector uh, and in the mining sector where they take things from the ground in politics and so you you really don't need a lot of people you i know i know oil companies that have that run onto billions in their balance sheets at the end of the year but only employ 20 people mm. you know <laughs> so you have very few billionaires or very few multimillionaires who are actually creating value right. um, in your country. And, and of course, whether you like him or not, uh, Dangote is, is, is definitely one of them. And then you need, you, know, you need more people like Dangote who are going to create value right. um, um, in the economy by hiring a lot of people. Okay. All right. Uh, Ayodele Dio, Gloom Television Managing Editor. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.